and I will bring back. Oh fuck this shit. Ride and watch hentai all the time with Senpai. My soul is tormented by a sucky bitch. Call assist, pants are dripping from the way I spit. Fell in love with this. Hello and welcome back everyone, the name is Kahengio and the game is Pokemon Duel. Today is the final day for the event and Team Flareo took it home. Team Flareon absolutely annihilated and deservably because most people went auto select and very many of them were put in Team Flareon and therefore numbers and the win rate got them the win. But that's not the most important part because they only get the 50 Carmonite and Team Vaporeon gets the 20 Carmonite and Team Jolteon doesn't get any Carmonite. But what makes me happy is that this event had a equal chance for every team to get their personal rewards going through. And if you go here to achievement reward, whatever not, the cube EX, it's very hard to get for some people. And this event actually was sharing enough. What the heck? It's not working. Well, I guess my game is not working. Well, the internet actually fucks up really bad here. That's why I'm not doing any live battles. I'm usually doing the... Um, Oh god dang it. I'm gonna be doing, uh, what do you call it, mm, dual ID battles because this is unplayable frankly sometimes, so I'm just not gonna be risking it at all. I got 32 duels in with 23 wins and I achieved 2500 team points, which is good enough or bad enough, I can't judge, but I did my part in this team event, so I can't be playing for losing. And thanks everybody who joined Team Jolteon, you are the best. Hopefully the next team event I will do a video pre, um, pre-registration or whatever so we can coordinate a lot better. And I know there are like many of you who don't play Pokemon Duel but there are still some of you who do and it would be great to be on the same page on the same team. That'd be amazing. I don't choose by popularity of, uh, of social media let's say. I choose by popularity of the Pokemon uh, versus me. Like if I like the Pokemon I choose that. And, of course, I do check the media later on to see what kind of competition is coming in through there. But that's not my uh, go-to point. As for the duels here, uh, let's go ahead and start the first one. I think I have three. And the third one was kind of exciting. And <laughs> I'm not going to spoil anything, so let's just jump into it. The first duel is versus player Isa or Isa. It's a he or she. We don't know. We don't judge. But... Uh, <laughs> It's not the duel itself that it's interesting, it's the setup. It's been a really, really long time ago that I saw Deoxys, a full squad with the Cosmo energy being implemented into it, trying to, uh, to make a play out of here. We can see there is a Deoxys attack form with level 10, C level 10, that's a psychic, psycho boosting, psycho booster that it will annihilate us. We can see the Lunala level 10, C level 3 with the uh, the purple two-star Moongeist being expanded. Very dangerous opponents right there. I mean, we don't even have anything that can kill them. Except this buddy, which I just testing. The Inkei. I have it level 8, C level 2. And with the evolution, of course, to the Malamar with 5 C levels on it. Level 6 with my Hypnosis uh, expanded. And I'm going to be doing this guy level 10 at some point. I don't know if I will be keeping it with the evolution. But in this specific game, it played out a role. So this is my team, standard Coco Gengar Rush team. Nothing very special. This is what works for me. So I start off with a Mew. The enemy will answer that with a normal attack, normal Deoxys form, which is a great counter to Mews all over the world. Then I will go with my Coco. And this is a great, great opportunity. He sends out his speed form. I would have sent out my attack form and then next or maybe probably do whatever a, um, a Cosmo Energy, it depends on where the Coco goes, I would send out my speed forms. But he does the speed form and I attack it obviously because why the hell not, I have tiny misses. Of course Coco desire, desires to land misses, but I still do it anyway, I attack him and he sends the other speed form on the goal. What I do here now, I just immediately want the Mega Gengar out. And he sends the attack form. And now I believe this was my misplay. Like the moment I, I go Gengarite, I should go ahead and attack the, the normal form immediately, try and kill it and whatever not, and then have the uh, attack form on the side and stuff. But, uh, oh wait, I do that. Wow, I thought I misplayed there. 
Unfortunately, I don't kill it, it's a bit toxic towards the Psycho Boost, but now I misplay. Now is the time where I should have taken the Coco and attacked the Speed Form. He doesn't even have Cosmo Energy out, he can't do anything about it. I would just surround the Attack Form, kill the Speed Form, boom, win situation, you can't do anything about it. Even though, even if I didn't kill the Speed Form, I would still have enough energy or time to go back to my entry, because then the enemy wouldn't be able to do anything, you know what I'm saying? But I keep on spamming on this door on the Deoxys attack form for absolutely unknown reasons. This is beyond me. I don't understand why I kept on doing it. But I keep on. He makes me respin with absolutely no purpose. There is absolutely no way he can go and dimensional slip while the Gengar is on the side of him. But hey, I keep on doing it. I keep on. He keeps on attacking me. I keep on attacking him. This is going to be like roller coaster until I get one turn. So I get the Zabdos out on the field because I fear that when I get the Coco into surround the attack form, there might be complications. He keeps on attacking by keep on rolling dodge. He doesn't care about that. He doesn't want me to roll dodge. So at the next turn where I have only one turn left, I do finally surround the attack form and I do finally attack the speed form. The unfortunate events here is that the speed form will survive. I should have double chance. If I had double chance there, there was very little that could save this dude from my demise. And of course, I had already expended a lot uh, of time on the Mega Ganger that I couldn't have been 3 MP to go ahead and grab the entry and forcefully make him attack me unless he wanted to get surround. So what he does here, he rightfully summons the uh, Max Revive on the attack form. I do grab the normal form so my Mew can grab the entry at some point. And I will immediately go and attack that defense form because I know that one, one um, hypersonic towards his purple is the death, but he's gonna roll a dodge towards my white even, by the way. And of course, the Cosmo energy will be popped right as soon as that happens, which is not the end of the world, but that free kill on that defense form is now long gone and I can't do anything about it. So I set my Combustion against the Deoxys attack form and he of course is gonna take out my Zabdos because that's what Deoxys do. They like Zabdos and they're gonna kill them. He's gonna respin the Dimensional Sleep, by the way, towards the 140 Psycho Boost, but my pussy Zabdos is not so pussy to die. He's gonna roll the Roost again. He's gonna just envelope himself in his blue shield and he's gonna like wait there for a little bit until the Deoxys feels better. What I want to do here is not attack, but put pressure so the Lunala cannot, you know, go somewhere and start attacking me or whatever not. And right here, I think I do the right decision to just go ahead and annihilate that fucking Deoxys out of the duel because I don't want him lurking around killing my Zabdos or whatever not. So this Lunala dude try and attack my Gengar and of course she gets it. One like freaking Contagious Terror could prolong this thing for a little longer, but I will grab the entry with my Combuskin and that defense form can't do much more about it. So what is this Lunala gonna do? It doesn't really matter because I can max revive again. I can max revive my Coco and I will be surrounding it once again because I can. So that was the correct play to make it surroundable, if anything. I do take Lunala in the sacrifice for, for Coco, but I know that next turn he has to take the speed form out. He doesn't have counter attack. I can still grab the entry point and still gold block with my Zabdos. So I do exactly that. I grab the entry point and attack even the defense worm because I know my psychic is 40, his Deoxys speed four psychic is 40. So I don't have bad matchups against the speed form without C levels. He goes ahead, threatens my goal. And what I do of course is gold block with the Zabdos. There's a really low chance that he kill can, can kill my Zabdos. Only the 20 against my purple or the miss would work. But of course, I'm not afraid of that. I don't really care. So what I do here is I try to attack with my Inke to put my Gengar back on the field because the Gengar is obviously better than a 30 damage Inke. But I'm gonna be attacking the counter of that defense form and I will be confusing that. So Inke actually played his part. He played the confusion on the enemy and now the Inke is just like big bows in the house. So what I wanna do here is attack the, def the uh, speed forms where are wasting time. They should be attacking the Combuskin, trying to land the 20 against the Cyclone Kick, but they're not. And this dude, all he has to roll is the purple and then go ahead and go into a miss while I roll a white attack, basically, you know? And his speed form isn't even attacking my Zabdos or something. They don't even try to open up the entries. They don't even try to fuck me up. And of course the Nightshade towards the miss happens and only now 
the speed form decides that, hey, it's about time I attack Mew. And Mew is invulnerable to those guys. Doesn't matter what Mew rolls, he can't possibly die. Mew cannot die to those guys. So what I do here, I just attack this, or nah, I don't know, I don't remember, but he attacks me, and I will roll the freaking miss. <sighs> That's why I hate four segment misses. Why can't we reduce them with level 10? But all right, whatever. I do grab the miss, it doesn't matter really, because it's still gonna attack my Mew. And I don't know why this keeps on happening. You can't physically, with your Pokemon, kill my Mew without the C levels. So I roll the Shadow Flip and Shadow Flip, we're guaranteed the victory. And that is the game one done. Just a little bit of nostalgia coming through, nothing very special. It's just something that reminded me of the good old days of the Deoxys that we were figured off AF. The second game takes place versus a player called 2 and a something I cannot pronounce. 3700 player, absolutely dreamy team. Look at this guy. He's carrying double chance, double chance, max revive, gold block, steel energy, a metal code. Of course, that metal code is for the Scyther to become the beast that he is. There's a Lunala level 10, C level 10, absolutely insane. There is a Sol Galeo level 10, C level 2. And those guys, Matang, level 10, C level 1. Matang, level 10, C level 1. And a Beldum, level 5, C level 2, that goes into a Matang of level 5, C level 1, into a Metagross. Level 3, of course, but doesn't matter because this Metagross is like, oh my god, even. <laughs> but this team is pretty freaking sturdy. I have switched my little... Uh, NK into the Curlia because it seems Curlia into Gardevoir just works better and her three-star purple can absolutely nullify Lunala and even Sol Galeo by switching them with whatever else shit they have in the PC that works for me to have as an opponent. So let's go ahead and play this duel back. He sends the Beldum out and I of course will send my Gengar to go Gengarite. But there's of course going to be the smart move of Sol Galeo going defensive because Sol Galeo is probably, if not the best defender in the entire game, one of the best defenders in the entire game. Unless there's like a gold surround or something, he can count out of situations pretty scarily. So I will go ahead and grab the entry without the use of any plates. I will just attack this Belgium and the Contagious Terror will not allow me to get him down. I do have my dodge expanded, so I didn't expect much there, but I of course wanted to. So we're going to see the other little buffer going through and I will match him up with my Zapdos. I have already seen those guys and what they can do. I've played it with versus them in room matches and I'm pretty terrified, frankly speaking, because they know what they're doing. So this guy, Beldon, will attack my Tapu Koko because he does have the buff for 82 freaking damage, which is absolutely irrelevant because I don't die and I will try and attack him. So double chance that Tapu Koko Go ahead and go aggressive to grab that other entry, if anything, and attack it now. So, quick attack is not good enough. Electromagnetic Blaster is going to be a pain in the butt, but Wild Charge is going to roll, and this dude is sent to the PC. Goodbye, alligator. It was a nice setup because those guys can, like, catapult the other dude and just win, if anything. So, I didn't want to attack anyone right there without a purpose. So he has everybody grouped up pretty nicely there and I would really like to Contagious Terror them on the Solgaleo, but Solgaleo doesn't touch anyone, so that will not work. So now that he has all the Pokemon on the field, I have my Pokemon on the field, the enemy decides that he wants to set up. Set up his energies, set up everything that he ever got and start attacking me. Well, you know what? I will set up the triangle with my Mew there so I can attack that freaking Me Metang or whatever without him just catapulting something inside my uh, trap without me having a response around. But unfortunately that third towards the bullet punch is about enough to get my Combuskin back to the PC where he belongs. And that's very sad because the quick attack against Metal Claw is gonna send my Coco to join the Combuskin right in there. And I'm all, all I'm left here is to attack this dude. And I'm like thinking Terrakin is about a great counter to this team, but I don't have any Terrakins and this is so sad. He's gonna send his little scissor towards my side and attack the Mew. And I don't remember if I die here. No, I don't. I roll the shuttle flip while he rolled the bullet punch, the thing that kills me. But I will roll back to my goal, try to, you know, set up a little bit of a perimeter there. And now I wanna backtrack my Zabdos because I don't really want to get surrounded by just the ability of this Metang guy. And if you guys don't remember what Metangs do and whatever, let me remind you. Let's. Oh, 
I do max revive something here and I attack, right? Do I? Yeah. We need we need to stop after this move. Oh, I don't attack. So what Matangs do with the tractor beam, Moon Worn other steel type Pokemon within two steps of this Pokemon to a point not more than one or two steps away from this Pokemon. That's what his tractor beam does. And he has it expanded to 41 segments. That is like almost half of his will. Well, a little bit shorter than half of his will. 40, um, wait a minute. Uh, 46 or 40, 48 is the maximum or 49, I don't remember. But it's not 100% will, it's just something 96 or 98. In any case, the ability here of the uh, of this Pokemon is at the start of your turn, if any of your other uh, Metang or Metagross are within two steps, you may move this Pokemon to a point two steps away instead of an MP move. If you do, your turn ends. So basically, I knew that he can like fucking teleport anywhere he freaking wanted without me uh, doing anything. So I decided to just backtrack a little bit, double chance whatever I had, or like set up a little bit something to uh, defend my entries. And I do believe my Psycho Switch is good enough. He's gonna respin that. He wants that freaking claw so he can claw his scissor close to surround my entry. But he can't. He will get sent to the bench right there. And I will switch the Combuskin with my Curlia and evolve the Curlia, of course, to Gardevoir because my Psycho or Whirlpool of three stars is absolutely crazy. So I will just go ahead and surround that scissor, but the game lags here. I don't know what happens there. He's gonna bring his Matang on the field. <sighs> I don't know, I'm gonna bring my Zabdas back. I don't know what's happening, but he tries to move Solgaleo. This is crazy, I forgot my words. But I'm gonna bring my Warp Holing Warp Holer closer. And I can see the Lunala already being like ready for her. But it's okay, my Warp Hole of three stars is plenty to do things to that Lunala that she doesn't expect. Even though I don't expect, oh, he did survive, I forgot that. The Gengar did survive, which is great enough, but I can't bring him closer anyway. So, I need to double chance here, and I need to warp that freaking Solgaleo away. And I need to warp him with something less dangerous, less scary that I can actually kill at some point. So, I do roll the warp hole. I'm gonna switch it out with the Beldum from the PC and let the Solgaleo with the double weight to wait there. And there's gonna be a max revive going for the scissor, trying on my freaking Gardevoir, and I think he's gonna be getting me. And this is really sad because on the next turn, if he wouldn't get the freaking bullet punch, I would surround him and send him right back to the Pacific where he belongs and do my own shenanigans whenever I was needed. So I'm gonna try and get my evolution here. The 68 wig spot is not gonna be good enough against the Metal Claw. I wish I rolled that 68 earlier when that Matang rolled the 30, but hey, can't do much here. I don't want to risk my Mew getting wrecked there, so I am actually leaving my uh, Gengar to sacrifice because I don't really need him either, frankly. I just I just want to make sure my goal is secure at some point and my Coco is on the field so my Zabdos can actually kill this Lunala. But the Roost, the Roost, bro, it's not something beautiful. So he's gonna grab the other entry. I'm now hiding my Coco away from the Lunala so I can go again and attack it while she has the entry and I have the plus 30 damage on my attacks, even if she halves it, if I roll the Thunder Crush, I know that I'm gonna be crushing that bitch. So this is, I believe, the correct play from me because there's no help to grab that entry again. Even the Scissor can do it. And right now, I wanna block that Matang attacking my freaking uh, Tapu Coco and bringing his other Matang and whatever closer. And I'm just gonna be doing like this. I'm gonna be staying and doing nothing. He does have the steel energy on him, that's why he attacked me right there. And it, I couldn't possibly kill him even with the Coco because he actually nullifies my extra damage on him. So there's gonna be the Beldum trying to go aggressive a little bit and I don't want him to grab my entry. I don't care about the Coco at this moment, I just don't want him to grab my entry. That was like my main precaution, superstition like you wanna call it. The quick attack is gonna roll once more. Not a single freaking Mele Mele wish ever was rolled in this game because if I did, I would roll this or this guy right here and let the freaking gold block take effect or whatever not. But this guy knows what he wants. He wants to tractor beam his other dude to surround my goal. It's not gonna happen and I've already seen it. I trusted my Mew there. Fortunately for me, he did not. I, I don't regret that and I just bring my uh, combustion closer right away because I know what he wants to do. He wants to do the goal surround and that's perfectly normal. So what I wanna do here now, I wanna roll pull this guy away or confuse him and I land the one thing 
that does absolutely nothing for me, the nuclear attack. And unfortunately, I don't even confuse the Soul Galio, which is quite sad, because confusing the Soul Galio would be good enough. The Steel Energy there prevents my Mew from dying, and I do get the Gengar out. So I decide if I can take Star or those two, I can do damage to them, but he smartly develops the idea that he has to move his Solgaleo back to the goal and he does so rightfully while I try to attack the little Matang that is on my entry. Try to free my entries from this dude. He's extremely, extremely annoying and what he wants to do now is bring his other Matang uh, or Belgium to attack my Mew because that, that thing has 42 damage because of the Steel Energy and it's so annoying because it does actually terribly nullify my Mew. So he's going to be rightfully doing so and trying to uh, to go ahead. So I want to kill it before he does that and before I can grab the entry because I knew if I can kill it, then grab the entry, then Gengarite to the other entry, I would have both entries in no time and there would be no problem to kill the other Matang. But he waits some time. I actually unfortunately go and go with, grab the entry instead of attacking again that Beldum and that was a misplay by me. I should have went beside Mew, attack it again, take the... Uh, I don't know, combusting on the other flank, start attacking, maybe get an evolution out of it. Would be super easy. He kills me, he gets the evolution, and now I really, really don't want him to tractor beam me, so I do evolve into Mega Gengar right there, right now, and I block him from doing anything. The game lags here, I think. Yeah, an error is occurring. Well, <sighs> this happened before, I don't know why it happens, but fortunately for me, I do win this game. This dude played absolutely phenomenal. I did get the cook on the field. I did kill the Lunala. I actually managed to send the uh, Combuskin to evolve and then bring him to kill. Cyclone kick the Solgaleo out of there. And that was just a pure win. Unfortunately, it lags here and it bugs me so much. I was hoping it was just a one thing, but it wasn't. In any case, let's go away and watch the third duel. In which, when I actually started this duel, I was like, what a stupid fucking game it is. Did you just notice the C levels on that dude? Did you notice the C levels on this dude? Level 10, C level 10. Level 10, C level 10. Level 5, wait. Yeah, level 5, C level 4. That's like the only guy that isn't max C level. But we do have a Mega Gengar level 5, C level 3, which is one C level more than my Mega Gengar. Level 10, C level 10, level 10, C level 10, and of course, level 10, C level 10 against my squad that you watched in the previous duel. And I'm like, all right, this is not gonna be fun for me at all. I was even in a losing streak before this, having myself the bug bot right before this guy. And we can see Gengarite, Gold Block, Max Revive, Double Chance, and Bright Power. This is a really underestimated plate. I do have the standards, of course, this is what I'm running. So let's see how I do. I send out my Coco and he's gonna like, my Coco is better than yours, I'm gonna attack you and I don't even have to charge. So he's gonna go right there in my face, he's gonna attack my Coco and my Mele Mele Wish that I wished so much will roll immediately, which is great enough. I want my Coco to be C level 10 also because then my gold will annihilate every other Coco in the game as well. So he does a smart move, he plays the Mew defensive and look at this fucking pro play. Instead of losing, Instead of losing his uh, his Coco to a surround or having to move the the thing to the goal, he goes like, ooh, he moves it back and he doesn't really care. And that's absolutely awesome. But I do a misplay here. I want to get everything immediately right here, right now. And the Mela Mela towards a uh, dodge is going to block me from doing it. I should just grab my entry, be happy about it. Hopefully I survive the other encounter, stand on the entry, the other entry and start working from there. But no, I wanted everything and I got nothing. The Sun Till Strike was gonna send me to the PC excuse me, immediately. And that's not fun. And of course we're gonna see more Pokemon popping up immediately. There's gonna be the Gengar on the other flank trying to go mega and start doing stuff. But I do have my Curlia. My Curlia is good. I like my Curlia. So what we're gonna see is a little bit of a defensive play with the Zapdos. That is a correct play. I mean Zapdos nullifies this. He has the other entry open. Absolutely, so he doesn't really care if he kills me or not. Even if I rolled a dodge, he didn't lose anything right there. But I'm losing Pokemon. So at this time, I'm like hot-headed. I'm gonna do everything I can to like either take something back or take something from you. So I just attack hoping for a uh, Cyclone Kick, which did not happen here. Very unfortunate, 
doesn't matter though. I'm gonna send out my Mew Defensive. I don't care about my Curlia, I just want my goal to be secure. Because even if I send my own Zabdos, he would still attack it and maybe get, you know, the Taco, not Taco, oh my god. He would get the Tapu buff and it would kill me. So what he does here is gonna bring him his old Galeo closer. And this is like the correct play. This is like the correctest play ever. But I'm not gonna let him have it so easily. I don't want him to have so easily, but you know, Zabdos miss. It's uh, it's the typical combination of a Zabdos. You cannot deny that. So he's gonna grab that entry point that will kill my Curly in the next turn. And I really don't want to give him that Curly. I really want to do this a Psycho Switch or something to like, whatever, yes. And the Psycho Switch is gonna land. Send this dude to the to the bench or whatever. And what I wanna do is, is actually bring my Combuskin out. Because Combuskin can kill Gengar, he can kill Lunala, he can kill Mew if lucky enough. He can do much more than a Gardevoir would. So he's gonna probably grab my entry point, but it was my turn, I don't know what he did. Oh, he grabbed my entry point, and I grabbed his entry point. And I don't really need that entry, but I wanna attack something, I wanna kill something right there. And if I manage to do so, I will be so lucky. So I do double chance that, and I go for the Coco. And the thing is, I go, oh, no, I go for the Gengar? Oh, wow, that was unexpected. I was just, I was thinking I was gonna go for the Coco, but I forgot totally. Still though, the Contagious turn towards the Wick Spot Kick, gets me on my knees and Lunala was just be grabbing that surround and I'm like, all right, this is it. I'm now losing like a crazy guy. So what I have left here is to attack the freaking Zabdos and it happens. The Thunder Charge, that one tiny hole, that one tiny hole brings me back to this game. And of course, there's going to be a Mega Gengar going through and blocking my freaking Mew from moving, and I will have to go block. Otherwise, he's going to just kill my Coco, and so on, so on, so on. But it doesn't matter. I just had sex with a freaking Zabdos, and I enjoyed it. So what I'm going to be doing now, right here, I'm just going to be go blocking. Doesn't matter. You can grab the other entry. I don't really mind, bro, because I know that I can't do anything about it. What I can do about it is go with the Coco and hope for another gold purple roll. Otherwise, I don't have anything else. And it's gonna happen again. Is this real life even? I'm gonna grab the Mega Gengar. And unfortunately, I didn't save the dual ID, but that's exactly how one player prolonged another game for like gazillion hours. It's because I freaking failed with my Mega Gengar to go ahead and, uh, what do you call it? and survive a Mew attacking me. So I'm gonna go ahead with my freaking Cyclone Kicking Cyclone Kicker and freaking finally gonna get the Cyclone Kick off his face to bring my Blaziken finally on the field. And I have completely freed my entry from, 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 from invaders and now I have my Blaziken going things and now I'm actually feeling really nice. So his Coco once again, a piece of my Coco, he's gonna be trying to like come close, I will be trying to attack him. Mele Mele, which is gonna roll, it's not good enough for him. He can't pass through unless he kills me. If he kills me, I'm gonna go again with my, uh, what do you call him, Blaziken guy. But now he wants my Mew. And I know if he gets this, this is gonna be GG well played for me. He does get it and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> What do I do now? And you know what I'm gonna do now. Warp Holling Wolf Holler is my only option. She's the one and only one that can do something about it. And boom, the miss. What even is this game? What is happening right now? He had me in so many occasions. Just things happening that shouldn't be supposed to happen. And of course, I'm just gonna bring my Gengar out because I really don't know what else I can bring close enough to survive this guy. He's just going Rampage mode. He wants to grab my entries and whatever not. And I just don't care because Contagious Terror and against a Thunder Charge, good enough for me. And I'm gonna be trying to Gengarite and start an attacking something or get some surrounds. I don't even know what I wanna do. I just wanna make this guy like suffer or whatever not. And I'm gonna just stand behind the Zabdos so I can grab the surround kill. He's gonna stand the mule on the goal. And I will grab the Zabdos, of course. And next, I will be trying to grab the Coco because of reasons. Unless he tries to back him off with something else, which then I'm gonna be grabbing the other entry or uh, attacking the Gengar. I'm not even sure whatever I wanna do here. Yeah, I don't care for the Coco. I wanna attack the Gengar. That Gengar is a bitch and I don't like him. And he's gonna get the Nightshade. Of course, the Abyssal Grip is good enough. I can now surround the Coco if he decides to go Lunala on the other flank, which is good for me. I don't really care. 
because then if I grab this Coco, I get my Coco to the entry. Good enough, you know, but I decided to attack the Lunala because why the hell not. Warp Hole, I can switch her with the Solgaleo and make them both have weight, do the other kids, do whatever they gotta do, you know. The weight is good. Warp Hole is pretty freaking awesome. And there's no bad Pokemon, frankly, on this enemy side, so I can't do much more. Hope this is not a bug that sucks. And I will bring back... Oh, fuck this shit. Ah, <sighs> you know, this, this bullshit just gets into my head. In any case, I want this game to 4K player defeated. I do have the screenshot somewhere in, uh, in my area. I'm just gonna show you in just a minute. This fucking game blows, man. It, it, it just... <sighs> Error on two duels. On, on dual ID. They need to fix this shit. They need to fix this ASAP. But this is the screenshot that I took after beating this guy. It was an immensely fun game. I never, I don't remember playing with someone of 4K ever before, but uh, it still was freaking RNG based and pretty darn OP having a bad internet connection throughout half of the game. In any case, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry the duels interrupted so hard. It's not my fault. It's not me who's running Pokemon Company. I just have the dual ID. It happened recently. It's not like it's been a month. So just apologies. I'm Kahankyo. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. And as always, have a nice day.